On our last episode in the Hollow Earth series, we spoke about Nicholas Rorick, who was an artist that lived in the late 19th century. Rorick also turned out to be a channeler. He was able to channel information regarding the Dalai Lama and the Dalai Lama's ties to Agartha. It just so happens that in the late 19th century in general, people, especially Europeans and Americans, were very much into things like seances and channeling. You can say that our world was going through a bit of a spiritual revolution. And in 1871, a book was released called The Coming Race. This book was about a superior subterranean master race with an energy they called Vril. The power or life force of Vril could be used to help humanity, to heal humanity, or to destroy it. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, as always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons. We have, again, picked up quite a few more patrons, and I am so grateful to all of you. We are all in this together, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Without you, this channel would not be possible. So thank you so much. Your support goes to help us pay for lights and cameras and equipment to edit. So I truly, truly, truly appreciate you all from the bottom of my heart. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on Mystery Monday, we are going to be talking about the disappearance of Maria Orsic. opinion, Maria Orsic is probably one of the most fascinating characters in our most recent history. This woman would end up becoming the medium for the during World War II. Maria Orsic was born on the 31st of October 1895, a Halloween baby. Her father was a man named Tomislav, and he was an architect from Croatia. At this point, Croatia was a part of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, very, very close to Austria itself. And in the 1890s, Tomislav went to Vienna on a trip where he met a ballerina named Sabine. Sabine and Tomislav were married in 1894 and then gave birth to Maria, their daughter, in 1895. Now, Maria had a very interesting upbringing with her parents. Her mother, Sabine, again, was a ballerina. At this point in our history, women were still not working. So for Sabine to be a working dancer meant that Sabine had an element of freedom and independence that was not very common for women at this time. Time. In some of the research I found, it was stated that Maria was always told that she was more beautiful than any silent movie star at the time of her life. And with Maria's good looks and her fiery independence that she had learned from her mother, this woman was going places. It's interesting because Maria also grew up with the book The Coming Race. Her mother and her father were both Germanic, and they believed because of this book that there was a godlike race of that came to this earth to inhabit it and that the German people were therefore descendants of this superior godlike race of people. Again, this book was really popular in the late 19th century, but this book would end up having a lasting effect on Maria. Soon after World War I, Maria found herself involved in the German national movement. This movement was very, very popular after World War I, and the, and the basic, basic belief was that they wanted every single German-speaking person to be united as one nation in solidarity. 
The biggest conflict was Austria. Now, Maria was from Vienna. She was Austrian. And they believed that Austria and Germany should unite again as one country. Now, growing up, one of my favorite movies of all time was The Sound of Music. This is covered in The Sound of Music. They were also Austrian. But unlike Maria, the Von Trapp family wanted to remain Austrian and not German. In 1919, Maria decided to move to Munich, Germany to be with her fiance. She was 24 years old. At this point, Maria came into contact with the Thule Society. The Thule Society was a group of German people who were heavily interested in the occult. Now, again, in the late 19th century, coming into the 20th century, this was normal. There were a lot of groups around the world, especially, again, in Europe and America, who were heavily interested in the occult and in the spiritual side of life. Nowadays, we think of the word occult as being bad, but all occult means is secret practices, basically, that are involved in things like magic. The Thule Society also focused a lot on border sciences. This is something that Hitler himself would heavily invest in as we get deeper into the stories. Border science is science that mainstream science does not accept as reality. We see this with like ESP, seances, mediumship, aliens, different dimensions, time jumping, all these fringe topics that occultists like to focus on. Now we know that for the the occult was really important to them. We spoke about this a lot with Himmler in Vivalberg Castle many, many, many months ago, which I will include a link to that video down in the description box below. But one thing I learned about the Thule Society in my research that is that this was the basis for the German Workers' Party or the National Socialist German Workers' Party or now, just a side note, I hope that you recognize that the word socialist was in the full title of this party. Over the years, we have been taught that it was an extreme right party, but I think we're now learning that they were actually on the left because socialism is not something that is on the platform for somebody who leans to the right. The Thule Society had a lot of German bigwigs at this time, including Rudolf Hess and Himmler himself. Now, before Maria had even moved to Munich or met the Thule Society, she claimed to have already been in contact with some alien life form. She said her first experience happened in 1917 when she was 22 years old. So if we take her story seriously, she already had quite an interest in the occult. And I do have to kind of defend her here because I know for me at least, having had a lot of spiritual experiences myself, Self, when these things happen, you want to know why they happen. When science or medicine or mainstream narratives can't explain certain things to you, you will do what you can to try to figure out what it is you are experiencing. Well, given Maria's very independent nature and her good looks, which allowed her to hobnob around with all these very powerful men, Maria decided that she and a friend would form a women's society called the Vril Society. This was very much an inner circle of ladies that was adjacent to the Thule Society. At the time of the coming 1920s, it was the style for women to bob their hair. If you think about the Roaring Twenties, especially here in the United States, you think about women cutting their hair off, wearing shorter skirts, showing their shoulders. There was quite a revolution happening in women's fashion. However, Maria and her fellow women in the Vril Society decided that they were going to wear their hair long. And when I say wear their hair long, I'm talking like long, 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 long hair. 
They believed that their hair would act as an antenna to continue to communicate with extraterrestrial life. Now, I would like to point out that Maria got the name Vril from the book The Coming Race. Remember, Vril means an energy, a life force. And as I said in the beginning, this is an energy that can be used to help people, to heal them, but can also be used to destroy them. Around the city of Munich, people got to recognize Maria and her ladies from the Vril Society because of their hair, and they also wore these discs on their clothes that represented the two mediums in the Vril Society, one of them being Maria herself and the other one being her friend, Sig Run. Now, of course, the alien species that Maria and the Vril Society focused on communicating with would be that of the Nordics. Now, again, is an very important for me to comment here that these extraterrestrial life forms like the Nordics aren't bad because they were communicating with people that were in this particular party at this time. In my opinion, a lot of extraterrestrial life form is a lot like human beings. Some are good and some are bad and sometimes the good can be manipulated by the bad. In 1924, Maria was invited to go to the apartment of Rudolf Hess in order to do a seance. She would be partnered with the man who was the head of the Thule Society. The whole purpose of the seance was to try to make contact with a man named Dietrich Eckhart. Now, Dietrich Eckhart had passed away the year before. As everything got started, Maria sat around the table and her eyes started to flutter back. All you could see was the whites of her eyes, very creepy in my opinion, and Dietrich Eckhart's voice came out of her body. But pretty soon, Eckhart told the group that he was not going to speak, that he was going to hand the microphone basically over to this alien life force. This alien life force was that of the Sumi that allegedly is from the star constellation of Taurus, which is about 68 million light years away from our own planet. Now, Sumi gave them all a story about how 500 million years ago, this alien life force had come to our planet, to the Sumerian area, and they were in fact Nordic beings. Now, to paraphrase what Sumi told these people in this seance is basically what is covered in the coming race. Unfortunately, because of the platform and because Big Brother is watching, I cannot go into too much detail about the conversation that happened during this seance, but it is all out there. If you want to read it for yourself, I would definitely recommend going to DuckDuckGo instead of Google because you can find more articles about what actually was discussed during this time regarding this group of extraterrestrials that claim to also be godlike, almost like demigods, and apparently are the ancestors of Germanic people. This Sumi even claimed that the people that lived in Sumeria actually survived Noah's flood and went up into Northern Europe, hence why the people of Europe, like myself, look a little bit different from where human, the human race is said to originate from. Now, another interesting side note about this seance is that apparently Maria also started to use automatic writing, which is something that people still use in seances and occult work today. And allegedly, she started to draw characters that would have been in the Sumerian language, stuff that she would not have recognized herself. Also, it's very interesting to note that the Sumerian language has the same vibration as the German language. Now, of course, this is all alleged. I don't know how we can even go about trying to prove it correct, but for the sake of the story and what possibly happened to Maria and her role in World War II, I feel like it's very important to recognize this story for what it is. Now, after this seance, over the course of many years, Maria and all these other occultists started to develop a um, flying ship that they believed they could jump dimensions to get to these alien races. As time went on in Germany and things got really bad for a lot of people who were not Nordic, Hitler himself started to 
crack down on the practices of the occult. Now this is something that I myself found extremely fascinating. We know that this party had a propaganda unit. We also know that this propaganda is still being used today. Well in 1941, Hitler decided to pass what is called the Hess Action. This has a lot to do with Rudolf Hess who we talked about in the seance. Rudolf Hess basically read his astrology and decided he was going to go turn himself over into England to the Allies. There, we could do a whole a whole episode just on the Hess action. But when this happened, Hitler decided that he was going to crack down on occult practices. It wasn't that he didn't like the occult. He just wanted the occult all to himself. He felt like that understanding astrology, being able to read the stars, would give this party a leg up and give them the ability to have world domination. Now in this propaganda to try to destroy the practice of reading astrology or looking at tarot cards, all this stuff, Hitler made an arrangement with the Catholic Church. Now, the Catholic Church would start to teach that this stuff was a sin. Well, the rest is literally history because nowadays many Christians do believe that reading astrology or looking at tarot cards is a sin, when that's nothing but basically Nazi propaganda. Now sadly we do know that the Catholic Church was pretty aligned with Hitler during this time. There are lots of letters that were written back and forth to the Pope. So before anybody gets in the comment section and starts saying that that's not true, I think you really should do a deep dive into that because there's a mountain of evidence to prove that he was supported by a lot of our religious organizations. But then again, on a positive note, most people on this channel, especially those who are of the Christian faith, do understand that the church and the faith are two totally different things. As someone beautifully wrote in one of my comment sections, there's Christianity and there's churchianity. And churchianity is extremely corrupt. At this time, when Hitler started to it really hit occultism hard, the real society decided to register themselves as a legitimate business. At this point, many of the people in the real society and the Thule society were working with high-ranking people in this particular party anyway, so they were relatively safe. After all, Maria had the nickname, or now has the nickname, as being called the goddess of the devil because she specifically worked with Hitler to try to advance their understanding of aliens. After all, they believed they were descendants of the most powerful aliens, and that's why that they deserved to have this world domination. And I swear to God, this is all legit. I know they don't really teach us this in school. They, they teach us that they want to roll domination, but for different reasons. They don't really talk about this like alien occultism as well, but it's a very interesting topic to research, and we will get more into this topic in part five on our Hollow Earth series. On the 22nd of January, 1944, Hitler and Himmler specifically started working with Maria and the Vril Society to again perfect a spaceship that would be able to take them to this star constellation that was apparently their ancestors. Now around this time it is also noted that, con that communication between this party and these aliens was getting more and more and more difficult. It is noted that the extraterrestrial beings that they were communicating with started to figure out that their messages for humanity were not being used for humanity, but were instead being used for this party to do what it did to other people on the earth. I, there's certain words, especially a word that starts with a G, Jenna, <laughs> that I can't say because of the platform, but I think you guys know what I'm talking about when we think about the devastation of World War II. So that gives me a lot of hope if there are extraterrestrials out there that there is belief that they stopped communicating because they realized that these human beings on the earth were not using their messages for good. Now the Vril 7 was the craft that they were working on that was supposed to be able to jump dimensions and be able to travel that 68 million light years to this other star constellation. There again is a lot of information on that about experiments that were done, all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go into detail about that on this video, but it is out there if you are interested in that kind of stuff. 
Now, Maria disappeared in 1945, and on the 11th of March, 1945, the last communication that she had with people was through a letter. The last words of her letter stated, nobody is staying here. Many people believe that Maria was actually able to jump dimensions and jump to this other star constellation. There are people who defend Maria that say Maria probably wasn't this bad person that we maybe think she is, that she was kind of duped into having to help this particular party to save her own life. And perhaps the aliens told her in advance what was going to happen and helped her escape. There are other people that believe that Maria might have lost her life during World War II when the Allied forces came in and started bombing different cities. There are also people who believe that Maria might have run off to um, South America, to Argentina, with a lot of the other high-ranking officials in this organization. There are also people that believe Maria started living in Antarctica. We know that this party had a lot of stuff going on in Antarctica, which again we will cover in part five of the Hollow Earth. And speaking of Antarctica and the Hollow Earth, there are many people who believe Maria moved to Agartha. Now something interesting I found in my research with Maria is that there is a woman that claims that she is Maria Orsic, or at least she was Maria Orsic. She believes that she has been in touch with all of her past lives, that she has had outer body experiences, and that she can remember every person she has been in the past, with Maria Orsic being her very last life. This is a woman named Valerie Lukianova. Valerie was born on the 23rd of August, 1985. She is a Ukrainian model who is famous for looking like Barbie. Now, Valerie herself has some very interesting views on race and race theory. I'm just going to leave it at that. Most people will probably recognize her because she did get a lot of fame for looking like, like Barbie. Now, it is interesting that she claims that she was Maria in a past life, but through all of my research, I couldn't find any explanation as to what happened to Maria. So what do you think happened to Maria Orsic? Do you think that she left this planet, especially since her letter said that nobody is staying here, that they're leaving? Does that mean that she is in Agartha? Was she rescued by other people through Operation Paperclip and given a new life in a new country? To me, her life is extremely fascinating. Her abilities are extremely fascinating. I don't know whether she was the goddess of the devil or just another victim of this party who used her in order to try to dominate the world and she did what she had to do to save her own skin. I don't know. But I'm super excited about diving deeper into this party and their interest in Agartha and whether Maria might have ended up there. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Once again, thank you so much to Josh McKay for doing our music, and thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys. I hope that you're having a wonderful start of your week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.